Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Tinker. Today, we are once again going to build a DIY project. Once again, Zigbee, but this time it will be Geiger Miller counter. We'll start in 10 seconds. As always, before we go any further, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you for all of your memberships. But also, I would like to thank everybody who subscribed, watched or liked my videos. Thank you! If you too want to support the channel, you can do that by clicking the join button below and becoming a channel member. Thanks! And now, let's get started with today's video. About a year ago, I created a video on how to make a DIY Geiger Miller counter by using the ESP board and the ready-made kit. And this works great. I still have that running in my setup. But that's not real DIY, because we used kit, we used the ESP and we just needed two or three wires to connect everything up and to make it going. But this time we'll be creating a full DIY Geiger Miller Zigbee counter. It means that we have to order PCBs once again, components, solder everything up, put the ready-made firmware on it and add it to Home Assistant. Once again, thanks to Jager, we have an incredible DIY Zigbee project. This one, and the link to the project will be in the description of the video, is using a PCB, holders, for the sensor or for the tube, and there are a couple of tubes. These here are Russian tubes, but I myself am using J305. This is the same tube, and the link to that tube is in the description of the video, that I used in a previous project. We once again need a Zigbee module, and please be careful, there are very similar modules. This one is E18MS1PA1. There is a module PA2, they are similar, but they are not the same. The firmware for this project will work on MS1, PA1, but in the repository, and I will be posting a link to GitHub page, you will find the source code. So if you have knowledge, time, and want to tackle that, you can compile the firmware to try and work with the other Zigbee modules. As I mentioned, this is the element that we need for this device to work. This one is SBM20, but as I said, I am using J305, and it's very easy to later on inside the Zigbee 2MQTT configure what type of module are you using. And what's best of all, you can select if you are using one or the two tubes. The two tubes will help increase the accuracy, but of course will also add to the cost of the project. This is the box that we will need. If you have 3D printer, you can even print the new face that is used for this project. Something like this one here. When I finish soldering up, I will tell you what are the differences. For example, this coil here, I was unable to find it. But there is alternative that should work just as good as this one here. Let's start soldering.
this is how the finished project should look like. On one side we have printed cover, visible USB port and the LED. This is what the project should look like when everything is soldered and inserted. As I mentioned, I only have one tube, J305, that was made in 2020. This is how the backside of PCB looks. Some of the things that you should be careful of. For example, this is a speaker. And while it's very easy to solder it, you may melt the case. So watch out when you are soldering this one. Current version of firmware is not using this speaker here. So if you do not hear anything from the speaker, such as ticking sound, don't worry. Nothing is broken, it's just not enabled in the firmware. I mentioned that I had to use different component and this component is specified as alternative in the bill of materials. In regard to this potentiometer, in the documentation it says that you should put it in a middle position. In order for me to get it working, I had to move it to the rightmost position, meaning I had to turn it in the direction of the clock. All the other components are standard components and there should be no problems with it. What I had problem with is my stupidity. These holders here have end stops and they look like this. So when you're soldering, try to solder it like this and not like this. And yeah, I was too lazy to desolder them, so I just cut those loops out. Next thing is, when you're soldering the LED, make sure that you leave enough of the legs, because it needs to go up and then bend in order for it to stick out of the box. The most difficult part for me to solder was this USB connector. You have to solder the left and the right pin to the connector on board in order for you to give plus and minus or 5 volts and ground. And that was a little bit fiddly. It wasn't that hard, but you just had to be careful. In order for us to program the board, we will use the same method we used previously. I will be using this smart RF with this pogo pins, put it on the board, and hook up everything to a computer. In the GitHub repository, click on the release link. There are two firmwares. One first, I think, also includes the router functionality, meaning that your DIY Geiger Miller counter will also act as a Zigbee router. And this one will create end device out of your Geiger Miller counter. I will go with this one here. Download it. Use following wiring diagram to connect your board to the Smart F programmer. You can use the CC debugger too, the pins are the same. Connect the programmer to the PC and here you should see a line telling you that everything is okay. The board is now connected. Load the firmware. Untick this box and click on perform actions. Once again, the programming is very quickly, but the verification process does take a little bit of time. And when the verification is finished, just unplug your programmer. Last step is to plug the power into the board itself. And start the pairing process inside Zigbee to MQTT. If you need to repair device with the Home Assistant or Zigbee to MQTT, what you need to do is quickly insert power and remove it 5 times in less than 10 seconds. This will reset the device and start the pairing process. By the way, if you are having issues with the firmware, what you can do to initiate pairing process if the device was paired previously is just reflash it. After you reflash it, it should also be in the pairing state if I'm not mistaken. And here it is, new device is visible. Let me rename it. And let's update Home Assistant Entity ID. Let's press save. Since the support for this device has been added to Zigbee to MQTT, and we can see that it exposes action, radioactive events per minute, radiation dose per hour, LED feedback, buzzer feedback, alert threshold, sensor type, sensor count, sensitivity and link quality. This is what we can see inside the Home Assistant or Zigbee to MQTT. The last scene, one minute ago, device type is router. It is supported. 
this is the address, network address, firmware build date, firmware version, is it powered by battery or pins, and has the interview completed. If we go to exposes, we can see what this device exposes. And here we have to tick some boxes or configure this device. Let me refresh those. You can see that LED feedback has been enabled and the buzzer feedback has been disabled. We can turn it on, but as I mentioned previously, it doesn't currently work. But what we need to configure here is sensor type. There are two Russian sensors, but we are using other. If you are using, like me, J305 sensor, you have to select other. The other thing that we have to select here is the sensor count. And we are using only one. If you do not see one here, you can use either those arrows here, or just type the number one and press enter. And this is all we need to do in order to set up this board. Sensitivity default value is 65. If you see that your values are off, although it's really hard to find the exact current values for your location, you can play with the sensitivity type. Alert threshold is 100. But once again, I will not be using this here. Instead, we will create automation inside Home Assistant for us to get notified if the value goes above the threshold. So let's go to Home Assistant. If we look at the device, this is what we get here. A link to device itself, firmware version for the Zigbee 2 MQTT, counter action, counter threshold, is the buzzer and LED feedback enabled or disabled, current counter for the radiation and the radioactivity, Geiger counter sensitivity and number of the tubes. There are six disabled entities and one of those I like to enable and this is link quality. But in order for us to get the value, we would need to restart Home Assistant. So we will not be doing that. The others can stay disabled because we can always go to Zigbee to MQTT and configure them there. The next step is to add this to Lovelace. I will select my Doomsday, add it to Lovelace UI, and this is how it will be seen here. On this screen, I already have my Gagar Miller counter here. I still have no values here, but that will change. Now that we have data available inside Home Assistant, what can we do with that? This is my current automation for my previous ESP Home, a DIY Geiger Miller counter. But since we are using a new one, we have to adapt it and make this work with this device. Let's go to automations. Let's add new automation, start with empty automation, radiation, warning, We will be using device Geiger counter. Geiger counter, radioactive events per minute, value changes above 50. For let's say 30 seconds. And we want to create action, call service, notify, warning, radiation is over 50 counts per minute and save. This automation now will be triggered if the Geiger counter reactive events per minute value changes above 50 and stays like that for 30 seconds. If the condition is met, we would receive this notification. I know that a lot of you will now wonder and ask yourself why, and especially why another DIY project. Well, to be honest, I really like Zigbee devices and the ability to create a DIY Zigbee device is something that's really wonderful. Especially if that device is also a router, meaning you can put it somewhere on the far end of your network and it will extend the range of your current Zigbee network. That's always a plus. I hope that you will never ever need this device, 
and consider it a novelty. If you already have sensors that are tracking the particles inside your apartment or the air quality, VOC or volatile organic compounds in the air, why not Geiger-Miller counter? Especially if you did it with your own hands and you can show that off to your family, friends or relatives. This is it for this Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that you think that this is a fun project. I know a lot of you will definitely not be making this device, but if you do, please leave me a comment down in the comment section below. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server, but feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates. And who knows what my next video will be. Also, by clicking the like button on this video, you are telling YouTube that this is a good video and that probably a lot more people should see it. And this helps the channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.